Hi, my name is Josh. I want to welcome you to another study session. And if you were with us last week, you know that we're spending the next four weeks going through the season of Advent. And so just as kind of a brief um, reminder of what Advent is, it's this season that leads up to Christmas, which we all know is the celebration of the birth of Jesus. And Advent is four weeks leading up to Christmas where we spend time really embracing this idea of waiting and waiting with anticipation or great expectation for what is to come. Another aspect of Advent that's kind of unique that might be lost along the way in some um, regards is that it's actually a celebration both of Christ's birth, which has already happened, and also looking forward to Christ's return, which we hope will happen soon, though we're not really sure when that will be. And so we're kind of in this in-between space between what has already transpired and what is going to happen and with Christ's return, the bringing of a new heaven and a new earth and things of that nature. So again, we get to both celebrate what has already happened, but we still also celebrate this idea of waiting and that's waiting for Christ's return. And so we're in the second week of Advent and what that means for us is that we are on this second candle. And so last week we talked about hope and that is this first candle. And then this week we're talking about faith. We also um, refer to it as the Bethlehem candle. And the reason for that is that it's a reminder of the miracle that happened in Bethlehem all those many centuries ago when Christ was born humbly in a stable in the town of Bethlehem. And what happened in that moment was really a fulfillment of God's promise, um, in particular to the nation of Israel, uh, many, many years even before that. And so this candle symbolizes that faith that the Jewish people had. And it all began with uh, a prophecy. And in particular in Isaiah, we read Isaiah 9. Six, And this is what it says. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And so for many of us, that's a very familiar passage. It's the one that we think of perhaps most when it comes to the Christmas season and the fulfillment of God's promise that he would send a Messiah. Now, albeit it was maybe in a much different looking package than was expected. Uh, for many, it was expected that God would send a triumphant king who would come in and, and overthrow the Roman government, which had um, overtaken the nation of Israel and, and put them into uh, bondage yet again. Um, but instead, God sent a very different kind of savior and uh, one who was much bigger than the governments at that time and was much more transcendent and would ultimately change the world. And so um, I want to want to spend a little bit of time today talking about faith and what it what is faith? I think we you know, oftentimes hear that word kind of thrown around pretty easily, um, maybe even a bit irreverently when it comes to um, the, the deeper meaning. But um, I think we can often confuse faith with a substance to obtain or to attain. And even further, faith is actually a gift rather than something we earn or achieve. And I wonder if we've ever really thought about it in that way. Again, faith is defined as the complete trust or confidence in someone or something. But I think along the way, perhaps this idea of faith has become, again, this substance that we, um, we kind of earn or that we, um, that we achieve or attain. 
But here's what Ephesians 2, 8 says, and Paul writes this, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. Have we ever thought about what faith is and the idea that faith is actually a gift from God? For grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. And so this phrase, the gift of God, the original readers or hearers of that in the Greek would have understood that it referred back to both grace and faith, which come earlier in this verse, earlier in this letter that Paul writes. And so grace and faith are both divine, divine gifts and our Father gives them to uh, kind of a select few people. It's, it's not like that Oprah moment where he's like, you get a little bit of faith, you get a little bit of faith, you get a little bit of faith. Instead, we only have faith um, because of the work of the Holy Spirit that is within us. And then we can truly give God all the glory for our salvation. And so... This idea of faith is, is much more kind of the idea of how we are responding to God and to God's Holy Spirit. How is it that we are moving towards Him? How is it that we are placing our trust in Him? How is it that we are recognizing Him alone as our Savior and our Rock and our Redeemer? How is it that we are actually uh, surrendering everything over to Him? and keeping nothing for ourselves. And so an important aspect of faith is to recognize that we are not better than other people because we have come to understand what the gospel is, what the good news of Jesus is. Rather, we need to have this posture or we're invited to have this posture of humility where we come to be grateful for this incredible gift that God has given us through Jesus. Not just the gift of Jesus himself, but the gift of grace and ultimately of faith. This gift of something working within us that is responding to God's spirit, our spirit responding to God's spirit and ultimately drawing us closer to him. So faith then is not some substance that we attain. It's not something that we earn. It's not something that we, uh, that we own other than we respond in a way. It's our human response to God's Holy Spirit. And so we own it in the sense where it becomes a part of who we are. And then there are things that we can do with that to you know strengthen that faith that we have in God alone and and really not in ourselves or anything of our own doing and so I have a few questions probably more questions than I do answers when it comes to faith because faith is one of those unique aspects that is so individual it's so uniquely us and that's not to say that faith isn't something that's shared corporately among many people. But the way that I come to faith, the way that I um, grow in my faith, the way that I strengthen my faith may look a little bit different than the way that you do. And that's ultimately because it is a very personal relationship between me and God. It is the way that my spirit is responding to God's Holy Spirit. So how do you view faith? How have you been conditioned? How have you grown up? How have you been taught about faith? Is it something that you attain? Is it something that you are trying to achieve or trying to earn? Is it, is it this substance rather than a response to who God is and who he is calling you to be, your spirit to his spirit? And ultimately, from that, how do you view the faith of others? Or how do you view others in relation to the faith that they display? Is faith something that we use to determine the integrity and character of others? But is it a way that we perhaps pass judgment on people? 
based on the way that they display their faith? Is faith something that you use to prove your own worth to yourself or to others? And do you treat faith, ultimately, do you treat faith as a gift, as this incredible gift from God himself? But ultimately, Advent is this set-aside season where we can celebrate the gift of faith, God's gift of faith to us through his son Jesus. And so as we prepare for the birthday of Jesus, we can reflect and remember on our own rebirth in Christ. We can celebrate what has happened in our own hearts, in our own minds, in our, in our very spirit, the, the transformation that has happened as a result of being a follower of Christ. And so I want you to think back on your life. Think back on all those years that have gone before. And can you remember all of the ways that God has been faithful? Can you remember all of the ways that God has come through for you? Now again, like Jesus himself, perhaps the packaging looked a little bit different. Perhaps the timing wasn't what you expected. But can you honestly look back on your life, take kind of full stock, take assessment of what has transpired over these many years, and can you pinpoint and see all the different ways that God has been faithful in your life? Can you remember how he has fulfilled his promises to you? And can you be surprised in the ways that he has done that? The ways that he has fulfilled those promises in a way that perhaps you didn't expect at all. I know for me, there are so many things where I look back on my life and they seemingly were uh, un or disconnected things. I didn't really understand how God was weaving all these things together. And yet when I look back and I'm able to see the ways that God has actually stitched those things together, all of those experiences, all of the things that I have gone through in my life, whether they be good or bad, whether they be difficult or whether they be inspiring, whatever it might be, all of these different ways that God has, has proven himself to me, and he certainly doesn't have to, but time and time again, he proves himself to be trustworthy, to be faithful, and ultimately to be my savior. And so I wanted to finish up our time today with, again, just asking maybe some more questions, but looking at uh, this idea of a gift. What is it that is special about faith and how can we treat it more like a gift? And so I kind of came up with three things that I can think of just kind of off the top of my head. I'm sure there are many, many more, but these are three things that I thought we could kind of focus in on in particular when it comes to viewing faith as a gift, a divine gift from God. And so the first thing is that we cherish it. You and I know all of those gifts that we have received in our own lives, the ways that we cherish the ones that are most precious to us. And, and those gifts can be any number of things. Perhaps it was the, the item itself. Perhaps it was the way it was given. Perhaps it was by the person it was given us to, um, by the person who it was given from, you know, somebody really special in our lives. And that's something that really resonates with us. And so that gift in particular is something that we cherish. It's something that we um, value perhaps above other things. And isn't that something that we can do with faith? Isn't faith something that we can take great value in or assign great value to in order to kind of raise it above the other things that might be um, competing for uh, time and for um, for our attention and things of that nature. So again, I think it's something that we can really cherish. Secondly, I think that treating faith like a gift is done when we nurture it. And what do I mean by that? Well, nurturing, like with a child, is when you 
pour into it, when you lean into uh, your faith in ways that you know that you can grow it, that you can strengthen it, that you can become um, better aware of how your faith is impacted by different things. But ultimately, if faith is what is drawing us to God, if it's the way that our spirit is speaking to God's spirit, if it's the way that we are responding to God's Holy Spirit, then what are the ways that we can nurture that? And certainly reading scripture daily, or even more than that, uh, praying is another discipline, meditating or contemplation, ways that we meditate on God's word day and night, um, and really spend time doing that in very uh, intentional ways. Um, Sabbath might be another way that we do it, where we purposefully remove ourselves and find quiet and solitude, and we are able to be with God uh, more regularly. And you and I know that when it comes to relationships, the more time that we spend with one another, the more time that we spend with people whom we love and whom we cherish, that relationship grows and it strengthens and it becomes very much central to our lives. And so very center of our lives should be our relationship with God. And by faith, we are able to do that when we, when we nurture that relationship and we, we make it a priority in our very busy, busy lives. And so the third thing I wanted to talk about was sharing it. And so I feel like this one in particular might be uh, the most challenging in some ways, because by sharing it, I mean sharing it in a way that is humble, that is modest, where you're not calling attention to yourself necessarily, but at the same time, you are very much actively participating and um, proclaiming your faith in the ways that you're treating others, in the ways that you're treating yourself, in the ways that you're just kind of um, walking through life and being a part of this world and this um, time that we find ourselves in. And again, if we look at it where faith is a substance, I think it can be used as a way where we uh, create judgment, where we pass judgment on one another, where we claim to have greater faith than somebody else. And so we're comparing ourselves to other people. It's a way where we can disqualify people and push people away at arm's length. And so when I say share it, I mean, what are the ways that you can look at faith, that you can actively participate in this world and be actively involved in people's lives where, like with God, where we are being drawn to one another or being drawn to God, we are using faith to draw ourselves to one another. You know, whether they be a follower of Christ or not, what are the ways that our faith is compelling us to kind of walk towards people, to move towards one another, and to do so in a very genuine and authentic and loving way. And again, I think that sharing our faith is more than just proclaiming and more than just evangelizing, more than just sharing the good news of Jesus. It's really displaying that in a very real and meaningful way with people where they will take notice and we are not calling attention to ourselves, but everything that we do is calling attention to who Jesus is in our lives, the ways that we have been transformed, the ways that our hearts and our minds and our souls have been completely transformed in a way that we couldn't do ourselves and in a way that we're not trying to prove ourselves, we're not trying to earn any kind of accolades or earn our way into heaven or any of those kinds of things but it's really truly who we are and the way, that we, um, the way that we live our lives because it's the way that we believe that we can honor God best and that we can glorify his name in the way that we, in the way that we do that. And so for today, that's all I have when it comes to talking about faith. There's so much more I could talk about like anything 
as you know, there's, there's so much in the Bible, so much um, just study that we could do when it comes to faith. But that's the point, isn't it? It's that kind of study, that kind of focus, that kind of desire to go to God and to learn more about who he is that really strengthens our faith and really creates this, this um, magnetism where our response to God's Holy Spirit is something that we look forward to and we are always moving towards and, and trying to embrace. And again, Advent is that season where we can um, do that confidently and we can set aside time in this time of waiting to really focus in and, and think about um, our faith. And so, that again, that's all I wanted to talk about when it comes to faith today. And if you haven't done so already and you would like to uh, learn more or be notified when new uh, videos come online, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And next week, uh, we're going to be talking about joy and what it means to be joyful or joy-filled and to spend time really looking at joy and, and in this season in particular, uh, maybe how we can um, rediscover that for our, ourselves. Perhaps that's an attribute that's been missing over these last several months. And so with that, what I wanted to do this evening or today is to... Um, pray for us and to do so with a written prayer. This Advent, Lord, come to the manger of my heart. Fill me with your presence from the very start. As I prepare for the holidays and gifts to be given, remind me of the gift you gave when you sent your son from heaven. The first Christmas gift, it was the greatest gift ever. You came as a baby born in a manger wrapped like the gifts I find under my tree, waiting to be opened to reveal your love to me. Restore to me the wonder that came with Jesus' birth when he left the riches of heaven and wrapped himself in rags of earth. Emmanuel, God with us, your presence came that night. And angels announced, into your darkness, God brings his light. Do not be afraid, they said to shepherds in the field. Speak to my heart today, Lord, and help me to yield. Make me like those shepherd boys, obedient to your call. Setting distractions and worries aside, to you I surrender them all. Surround me with your presence, Lord, I long to hear your voice. Clear my mind of countless concerns and all the holiday noise. Slow me down this Christmas, let me not be in a rush. In the midst of parties and planning, I want to feel your hush. This Christmas, Jesus, come to the manger of my heart. Invade my soul like Bethlehem, bringing peace to every part. Dwell within and around me as I unwrap your presence each day. Keep me close to you, Lord. It's in your wonderful name I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.